Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this redgamingtech.com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news which, as usual, has popped up in the past 24 or so hours. And no camera for me today, but normal service shall resume tomorrow. The good news is, though, that we are going to be covering an awful lot of very cool news, and we're going to start it out with a mysterious APU that has been discovered on the user benchmark database. Full credit to Kamichi on Twitter for discovering this. A number of you actually messaged and emailed me to cover this. So we're going to start things out because this one is... Yeah, when I say mysterious, I do mean very mysterious. So first things first, let's have a look at the basic system configuration. It's being identified as AMD Flute. And the memory is 5.4 gigabytes free of 16 gigabytes total at 0 gigahertz clock frequency. So I'm going to go ahead and say that at least the clock frequency there is probably not accurate. Uh, it's The reason you watch me is for these insights. Uh, the display resolution is 4K, and that may not raise your eyebrows initially, but typically for early engineering samples, at least in my experience, 1080p is generally the resolution that they test these things in. Sometimes it can be even 720p, so 4K... I wouldn't say it's, you know, really bizarre, but it's not common. Operating systems Windows 10, whatever, and the run date, in other words, when this was submitted, was, well, today. It's uh, July the 22nd, 2019, and it took them 105 seconds to run it, and it was a user in China. Okay, so that stuff is fairly easy to comprehend, but now let's get through, uh, sorry, get to the head scratcher stuff. Uh, it's an AMD engineering sample, 100, lots of zeros, 4 15 underscore 32, slash 12, slash 18, underscore 13 F9. The socket is identified as BL5, which is definitely an uncommon socket. We'll discuss that more in a moment. One CPU, co uh, sorry, one CPU total is uh, detected, but it com is comprised of eight processor cores total. And SMT is enabled, so that means we have 16 threads. The base frequency is 1.6 GHz, but it does turbo up to 3.2 GHz, which, according to the average, it seems to maintain throughout. Um, the scores, though, are kind of interesting, because the float performance in particular is lower than what you would expect for Zen 2. It's actually kind of weird, because if we compare the results of the uh, engineering sample we have here against a 1700X, which is obviously an 8-core, 16-thread processor, but based on the original Zen architecture, the performance of the 1700X is much closer than the 3700Xs for single-core, integer, float, and mixed, and of course we could say much the same for the other scores as well. Some of it is definitely the clock frequencies, of course, but it doesn't necessarily uh, explain all of the differences. And indeed, we can also look at other aspects of the configuration as well. So we also have the memory configuration. Uh, it's listed as unknown uh, 16 gigabytes. So the clock frequencies for all of the different chips on whatever system this is are reading at 0 megahertz, so it cannot actually figure out what clock frequency the uh, memory is running at, but each of the modules, or each of the chips actually, is 1 gigabyte in capacity. 1024 megabytes, of course, is 1 gigabyte. And the total uh, bandwidth is listed as 62.8 gigabytes per second. This is actually much faster than you what you would get with a dual channel memory configuration using, say, DDR4 at like 3000 or even uh, faster memory like 3600 megahertz, which obviously, depending upon the rest of the system configuration, is going to get you somewhere in the neighborhood around 33, 34 gigabytes per second. So, yeah, it's basically almost twice the speed. Unfortunately, doing actual detailed analysis of the memory configuration is really difficult because we don't know the rest of the uh, configuration of the system. I will also say that the cache 
sorry, system memory and latency ladder is a bit weird as well, uh, because obviously this is a great indicator of how the cache structure uh, functions on a processor. As a quick reminder, the Zen 2 architecture doubles the amount of cache compared to the um, original Zen and Zen Plus. So this basically means that each CCX for Zen 2 has four processor cores, so that's eight threads total, uh, and this is combined with 16 megabytes of level 3 cache, that's double that of the previous generation, which was eight megabytes. So now two of those CCXs come together to form a chiplet, which AMD refers to as a CCD. So basically, this means that each chiplet has a grand total for Zen 2 of 32 megabytes of level 3 cache and 8 processor cores. So that total size is 74 millimeters squared for the entire CCD. Uh, one of the reasons they managed to shrink it so much is because, of course, of 7 nanometers, but you've also got other factors too, like most of the I.O. being thrown onto the I.O. controller for like memory, uh, for the uh, memory uh, controller and for you know PCIe and basically the input output is plopped onto its own uh, die. So that basically means that the chiplets themselves can be smaller. To put this into some level of um, context, the Zen Plus processors were built on a 12 nm process and were, were uh, 44 millimeters square for the actual cores and the actual uh, cache was 16 millimeters square. So that's way, 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 way bigger because 44 millimeters squared for a single CCX of Zen Plus plus 16 millimeters and Zen 2 CCX is just 31 millimeters square. So that's basically 50% smaller than the second generation uh, Zen Plus processors. So that's definitely one thing you can see. And yeah, if you look at the actual configuration here, you can see an absolute massive leap in the um, in the latency when it comes to, uh, from uh, 4 megabytes up to 8 megabytes. So one of the reasons that you would see this is because the amount of cache has been drastically reduced uh, compared to other processors uh, in the Zen 2 lineup. So it looks almost like we've got like a hybrid in terms of performance from the original Zen and also Zen 2. But unfortunately, because we don't know enough about the characteristics, because AMD now are obfuscating the uh, code names of its processors, you can't really use the decoders like you could uh, back in the past as well. It makes it even more complicated to get able to understand what this is. Um, and also the BL5 socket, there's very little information about it online. Doing a Google of it actually takes you to AMD's uh, semi-custom solution page. And I think that's probably what this is. I don't actually think that this is for a console. My personal takeaway from this is it's most likely either for like a um, an APU for like a, a, a laptop or a notebook. Maybe an APU for something like uh, some type of controller, that could also be a thing. If it is for a console, or an early engineering sample for a console, then I would go ahead and say that it might be for the lower end Xbox that we're hearing about, um, which is not uh, going to be Anaconda, it's going to be Lockhart. The only issue I have against that is that Lockhart, from what we know, is going to be very low spec. It's going to essentially be just about enough to run some game logic. So things like most of the heavy-duty rendering are going to run essentially on the cloud, but some stuff is going to run locally just to reduce latency. That's what the rumor is. Um, and so I think that having uh, 16 processor cores here is going to be too much, and having Narve Lite, which is the GPU in question, it also might be a bit much. The only way I could potentially see this even being necessary is maybe if you're going to be running... Uh, backwards compatibility stuff locally, which once again, it's possible, but I just don't see it. So my personal opinion of this is that most likely we are not seeing something which is for the consoles. 
I will also, however, take us to another piece of AMD news, and that is that Ada64 has told us that Threadripper 4000 is going to be codenamed Genesis. Uh, full credit to Planet 3D Now for this discovery, actually. Uh, so, we all know that AMD and Intel are rumoured to be launching new processors in October. With Intel, it's a bit ambiguous of what they're going to launch. It could be Comet Lake, although personally I've been told Comet Lake is going to be a little later, so I'm I'm going to guess it's going to be Cascade Lake. But with AMD, uh, the rumours are that it's a, uh, they're going to be launching another high-end high processor solution. And given that we know that 3950X is going to launch in uh, September, well, unless there's something we really don't know about, the only logical conclusion is the next TR platform, uh, which of course would in this case be Threadripper 3000. But Ada64 has indicated that there's going to be the 4000 series, at least it's already been reserved, and it is going to be known as Genesis. So we have Whitehaven, Colfax, Castle Peak, which is the upcoming one, and finally, Genesis. Oh, and as a slight aside, all of these are in, coming from the state of Washington, which is really cool. Um, as regular viewers know, I have visited the state of Washington quite frequency, frequently, but I have not actually been to these specific areas. Um, and so it's going to be really interesting that, a, that uh, we already have A-64 referencing these, but obviously there are no actual technical details. What we have learned about uh, next generation Zen processors, Zen 3, so not Zen 2, uh, Zen 3, and they are apparently on track, and they will be using the 7NM Plus uh, process. And the only thing that we've really learned, potentially, is that it will not have SMT uh, like we already have. So in other words, two threads, it will be up to four threads for uh, this generation for Zen 3, but that has not been confirmed, but it has appeared in a couple of different rumours and seems quite consistent. It doesn't seem to be going away. Uh, and also, we are hearing it might be PCI Express 5.0, but I'm going to guess that's probably not going to come in until uh, Zen 4. Anyway, next piece of news would definitely be Ice Lake. So Ice Lake is... I can't even say it any other way, looking monstrous in terms of performance. It, it really is. Ice Lake, of course, uses Intel's next generation uh, processors, which are dubbed Sunny Cove, and will be built on the 10NM process. Unfortunately, we're going to have to wait a while for these to pop up on desktop. However, if you're interested in buying a laptop, then you could be really happy with one of these CPUs, such as the i7-10 65G7s, which is a 4-core, 8-thread part, and is a 15-watt TDP. Uh, we're running at 1.5 GHz for the base frequency and 3.9 GHz for turbo. There's actually a couple of different benchmarks for the uh, temp generation CPUs, but we'll start things with the Geekbench results. So the G7, as I'm going to call it here, so I don't go insane as I'm reading out the results, uh, actually scores just a shade under 5,700 points in single core. And for multi-thread, scores 17,741 points. Now the reason that's so impressive is because it actually outperforms the Ryzen 9 3900X in single core. Um, it's actually really close even to an 8700K. So, once again, 5700-ish points. Uh, the 3900X usually scores around 5600, sometimes 5700. But basically you can say that the 5G7 is rivaling it, and the 8700K generally beats it by a smidgen. It's usually scoring around 5,800 points, 5,900 points. So, once again, yes, the desktop parts are faster, but you're also looking at a TDP of, like, you know, 90, 100 watts compared to, well, one that's way less than that, 15 watts. 
Uh, we also, as a point of comparison, have a CPUbenchmark.net comparison. And once again, the 1065G7 running up to 3.9 gigahertz with a clock frequency and base of 1.3 gigahertz. The number of physical cores is four physical cores with two threads per core, SMT or hyperthreading, as I'm sure Intel would prefer you to call it. Uh, the clock frequency is 1.3 GHz and 3.9, and the Ryzen 7 3700U, 2.3 GHz for the base frequency, so definitely considerably faster for the base, but the turbo frequency is pretty much identical. It is imperative to realize that this... Uh, the 3700Q is not using Zen 2, it is a Zen Plus processor. But even so, the 5G7 stomps it. I mean, it really is ridiculously fast. Uh, the CPU mark is 9800 points compared to basically uh, 8000 points. So that's a significant uh, increase. Yeah, uh, so that's almost 2,000 points difference. It's, it's significant. So I think these next generation iSync processors are going to keep Intel in the running for mobile parts. It's definitely a shame that we're going to need to wait for desktop. I will remain uh, hopeful with Comet Link. Um, hopefully Intel can crank up the clock frequency uh, for all of the different cores and also charge a reasonable amount. I think if they are forced to charge more than they are currently with the 9900K uh, for a 10-core part and we don't see higher clock frequencies, it's not going to do well against AMD. But I think that if they can crank up the clock frequencies, they could charge a reasonable price for it. I don't think that um, it's going to beat AMD in certain tasks, but I think that it's going to make a compelling case for itself in gaming and some other tasks as well, maybe even video encoding, depending on how well things scale. But we'll have to wait on Comet Lake. However, I do feel much more confident on Intel's mobile side of the equation. And I really want to see Intel, um, sorry, AMD push out more parts in this sector as well. Uh, yeah, so we're going to have to wait on AMD though. And as a very last thought, I really don't like the way AMD are calling the... Uh, APUs for the laptops, the 3000 series, much like how they did for the Zen processors with the 2000 series for APUs. It, it It's kind of confusing marketing for the average consumer, so I wish that they would not do that. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Normal stuff if you did, like, share, comment, and subscribe. And you could, of course, find us on social media, which is linked in the description of this very video. And you can also find us on Amazon affiliate links. You can find uh, Green Man Gaming Cell, which is currently going on uh, affiliate link, which is pretty cool because they're an official uh, key reseller. They work with companies like Bethesda and Capcom. And you can also find us on uh, Patreon as well. With all of that said, take care of yourselves. Have a great day. Bye for now.